Ah, spring. That magical time when planning turns into reality and a gardener's thoughts turn to Georgia. Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dan's Veggie Patch. In this episode, I'm going to show you why I built all this, and I'm going to let you know what's so important about my front porch. So stay tuned. By the way, I built this bench. Well, I didn't build the sides. You know, that's cast iron. Uh, but I milled the cherry. This is cherry, western Pennsylvania. Very nice. Put some weather seal on it. Pretty comfortable. Now back to the question, why did I bother building all this? I have plenty to do in my life. Or why would an otherwise normal, although my sisters would disagree with that assessment, middle-aged guy take the time and the effort to put all this and his property? Well, I'm not going to tell you why. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to take you right now to Charles Dowding's Homemakers in Great Britain. I did contact Charles and asked for his okay to run that footage and he uh, graciously gave me the okay. So thanks Charles, I appreciate that. I hope you can all see uh, from the footage just how beautiful a place Homemakers really is. And not just as a market garden uh, for growing vegetables and such, but uh, just as a, a relaxing place, a calming place. And really that's the kind of place I'm using as uh, it's my target uh, here at the Veggie Patch. Oh, between the garden I have over there and the compost back there and uh, Renee's she shed here we'll have maybe the uh, the greenhouse maybe over here all nice and green and verdant maybe looking nice and calm got the bench back there that's the kind of thing that I'm looking to do here so is to bring just a nice little bit of calming greenness and vegetableness I don't know to uh, to my little patch of the world here in the meantime uh, let's go take a look at the monster all right, so here's the monster behind me, compost station. I feed it, and it returns the favor in spades. It's a friendly monster. Now, let me tell you where I'm coming from on all this. Um, let's say I'm following somebody in a pickup truck, and uh, I see him roll down their window and toss out a cigarette butt, uh, or maybe they got some fast food wrappers in the back of their truck that blow out. You know, I'm not the kind of person that's going to say, hey, your internal combustion engine and that littering is going to make the earth explode in 10 years. That's not me. Okay. What I would do is say, hey, 
Have a little personal responsibility, will you? Take that cigarette butt, put it in your ashtray. When you get home, empty the ashtray properly into the garbage. Okay? Don't let stuff blow out the back of your truck. Okay, so, um, with the compost station here, it's not like, hey, you have to compost to save the world. No, I'm not, that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because, well, first off, it's a challenge. I think I can do it. And second off, I'm going to have all kinds of garden waste. Uh, all the dead green plants when they're done. Uh, you know, I've got an acre or so, whatever, of uh, clippings if I want them. Uh, if I don't put them back in the yard, what am I going to do with all that? You know, why let them sit somewhere and just rot? As well, I've got a couple acres. Let me get the, the finger there. There, This way, I've got a couple acres of woods over there. That's got a lot of dead stuff down, you know, and I've got a chipper. Why not chip it and use that brown material as well as the dead stuff to make compost, something that I can um, replenish uh, my beds with every year and really build new ones. What the heck? Might as well use it. So let's take a little visit to go through the old compost station. Okay. Here's the compost station. I built seven bays because Charles built seven bays. So I got six and a spare, really. Um, the first one right now, I'm just using to stash stuff. Second bay is the first bay that I'm filling for this year. You can see I got some stuff in there now. Now, when this bay is filled, what I'm gonna do is move this over into bay one. I'll take this temporary side out and move it over there and that gives it some air and then Bay 2 will be open. By that time, I will have started filling up Bay 3. And so when Bay 3 fills up, I'll take this side off and then shovel it over into Bay 2. You know, turn it, get it some air. And I'll just keep going down the line that way. And so I've got really six times I can do that. For a whole year. I don't think I'll be needing to do it six times because I don't think I'll be uh, making that much green waste. Uh, but who knows, you know, I've got the space to do it. Uh, here in Bay 5 and Bay 6 are actually uh, two piles that I did last fall. This stuff's ready to go. Okay, it's looking pretty good, nice and soft. Some good stuff in that one. I turned that one over from 6 here and then I started filling this one. This one is actually ready to go over into Bay 7. Now, I'll just turn that when I get a chance. Um, you see, I also keep track of it. I've got a thermometer in there. And, of course, up in the green zone is best. This has really done pretty much all the composting that it's going to do. So the temperature's not up that much right now. And you can see over here in Bay 7 um, how I built it. What I did was I got on the interwebs and found somebody who was giving away pallets. So I took the old truck and trailer over there and started loading up. What they had were narrow 32 inch pallets and they were probably, oh, I don't know, a good six, seven, eight feet long, at least anyway. Um, so I had to do a lot of cutting and chopping and, and screwing together and stuff. Um, but I got a lower section that's uh, 32 and an upper section that's 22. So these are 54 inches tall around the two sides and the back. And then these, these walls, temporary walls in between the bays are of course temporary. I can move them um, to shift my compost from one bay to the next one down when they're ready to turn and get some oxygen. Come around the corner here, you know, you can see it looks like a pallet, which it is. And then down the side and the back, uh, you can see the pallets going all the way down. Now what I'm planning to do back here, and I'll take a look up top here, uh, I'm going to be pushing a gutter on this back side. I've got two old pickle barrels that I'm going to be collecting water, and because it's another uh, might as well thing, if it's going to be raining, might as well collect the water and use it up here close to the garden, because right now uh, I don't have any water over here. It's over at the house, which is a bit of a walk, or a bit of a yanking, drawing, lugging hose over here. 
So if I can get some water over here, why not? And there's the roof. I made the roof out of vintage tin. Used to be, well, a roof on a barn, but I like the vintage look. Now, as far as putting stuff in the compost piles, there's green material you can put in and there's brown material. The green material gets the hot. It, uh, it generates the heat and kills weed seeds and this and that and the other, um, which is really good for it. And that's stuff like, uh, as we said, the old fresh uh, vegetable matter, uh, old dead growing stuff, the lawn clippings, uh, old coffee grounds are good. Fresh manure works as a great green. Um, brown would be uh, wood chips or woody stems. Uh, cardboard, I use cardboard a bunch actually in paper as browns. You can see some cardboard in this one as a matter of fact. So um, it's a bit of alchemy I guess, I don't know. Um, you put in some green and some brown and there's some ratios you're supposed to use to come close to doing it right. So we're going to see how I do doing that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a, a high profile use of this particular compost right here. And here's why it's high profile. I am taking my compost and I'm going to use it to plant these geraniums in the window boxes all along the front of my house. So we'll see how good a job I do. We'll see how my months and months of experience pay off. Now, why did I not use my own compost to start my original seeds way back in February? Well, it's funny how the old noggin works. When I did those piles in the fall, I had them mentally set back for the perennial garden I was going to put out, or I will put out, uh, this summer. So, it never occurred to me to actually use that because I thought I had already uh, planned to do something with it. Quick cold frame update. Uh, won't be long. I may do it actually today. Uh, see the cabbage, the Brussels sprouts, and the cauliflower are all doing really well inside here, and they are ready to get out into the garden. And as a matter of fact, that little experiment I was doing, uh, planting half in the garden and leaving half in here, uh, no doubt that the stuff over here in the cold frame did a whole lot better than the stuff out there in the garden. Here's some of the latest plantings. That is black magic squash. Over here is yellow squash. Next row over, I've got cucumbers up. Beyond that, I've got the pole beans. And back here in the corner, I've got spaghetti squash. Now I'm thinking, I'm going to be trying to grow all this vertically. And it seems like a lot of squash to plant in such a small place because, you know, these, I'm sure, these plants are going to get huge. But I am trying my best to grow them vertically just to see how well it'll work. If they get too big and too gangly, I'll deal with it later. Well, that's going to do it for Dan's Veggie Pets for this time. Hey, please go ahead and like the video. And if you like, go ahead and subscribe. You know you like these goofy videos, don't you? It's a guilty pleasure. You like watching them, but you're not going to tell anybody. But I wish you would tell somebody, because that would help me. This is great compost I made, by the way. Nice and spongy. Great. And we're going to see how well it does with those geraniums. Go ahead and like, and share, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff. See you next time. I'm not the kind of person that's going to say, hey! Oh, wait. There, there's the camera. When I planted the turnips for greens, something was bugging me. I couldn't figure out what it was until the garden peas started coming up right in the middle. Ow! This is almost cushy enough to lay down and take a nap in. This is just so nice and soft. Really.